I was saying that there's something called process control block. So we know every process is in the memory and it has some stuff in it and it has, there are two things important. The process is in the memory with some contents and secondly, it will have some states. It might be a new one, it might be ready, it might be waiting, might be terminated, etc. And also, it will have these uh, data so that the operating system can use this information to control it, to control, organize the processes. For example, every process must have a state flag, all right? It's a data, it's an information attached to each process, right? If a process is running, how does it know? How, do you, uh, how does the operating system know that it is running? It will just look at the memory space and uh, that PCB, that control block which is on the memory too, and check its state. If it's running, if it says running, it will be running. <laughs> it's a running process. There's no question about that. When, <coughs> when the operating system creates a new process, automatically by default it will set this process state to what? New, because it's new, right? Wh when it's loading it <coughs> into the memory and then the CPU starts <coughs> reading its lines, the code, then it will be set to running, etc. And also it will have the program counter and the CPU registers, scheduling information. It's all about the CPU now, it's not the memory. And then memory management information. Where is, you know, in the memory, what's the starting address? What's the ending address? Where does the heap start? Where is the stack uh, of data in the memory? All right, where is the program counter? And IO status information. Every process may or may not be using some sort of a IO devices, right? Maybe it's using the USB, maybe it's using the network, Etc. You know, that's kind of those IO devices must be listed also in the process uh, control block for each process. And this is how it looks like in the memory. You know, if you have a bunch of stuff, bunch of information required data for anything, for any object, it will be in the memory. All right. Sometimes part of these information, uh, for example, a group of process will be stored in the hard drive instead of main memory for speed reasons. For example, you have lots and lots of things to do and you have like 2,000, I don't know, <coughs> a large amount of processes. And instead of putting them all, all PCBs on the memory to save space, maybe you just put some of them on the hard drive <clears throat> so later on you can load them up back to the memory from the hard drive saving time and space in the computer. This is the whole uh, this is the way how it works with uh, multiple processes. This is how it handles, how the operating system handles the processes. Let's say you have process 0 running already. It's executing, right? And then there is an interrupt or system call just tells that process, the operating will, uh, system will say, stop right there, I have an interrupt, I have to do something else. And then it goes back to, switch back, to, uh, switch to process one, all right? Uh, but before doing that, it has to save the process zero's state information, the PCB stuff needs to be state um, needs to be saved into somewhere in the memory so that after returning back from the other process it will be able to load all those stuff back to the memory and then start running continue running okay otherwise you know if you don't save those things the PCBs or any process you will not be able to return back where you left off, right? It's not going to be possible. So you will just give a break, save things, and then jump to the other uh, process, uh, execute that new process here, 
which was idle for a while and then when it's done or there's something else to do if you had to switch back to the process zero you can switch back but here there's a different situation while running p1 there's another interrupt or system call it will just say pcb1 back to the memory and then reload state uh, pcb0 why is that why I'm switching between PCB0 and PCB1 or process 0 to process 1 because in my list I have it says you have to run P, uh, process 0 you have to run process 1 okay and then while I'm doing process 0 all of a sudden I have to read from a CD okay it's an IO request the uh, process 0 does and while I'm waiting for the CD CPU is useless, right? There's nothing else to do. I have to wait for the CD. Instead, people are smart, right? Writing those algorithms and operating systems. Instead of wait, wasting time waiting for the CD, I cannot proceed on process zero. Let's switch to process one and do something on process one while waiting for the process zero, right? And then it does that uh, switching runs on the process zero, I'm um, sorry, process one. And in the meantime, there is an interrupt coming back to the CPU says, hey, I'm done with the CD-ROM, okay? The IO request is complete. Now you can switch back to process zero. So it does so. Here, it goes to the memory, loads those PCB zero information which was saved above but before that it has to say PCB1 states all right that PCB information which is this huge stuff you know what is my state what where is my heap what is my program counter what do i have in the cpu registers what do i have in the uh, in the memory etc so everything related to the uh, process zero will be loaded back from the memory. So this is how the CPU works with the processes. Actually, this is how the operating system manages these processes, okay? As a developer, you will never ever do any process management stuff because everything is done by the operating system, okay? But sometimes you may need to uh, we will uh, come to that one on chapter 4 about threads sometimes you're going to create multiple processes at a time in your one single application especially if it's a real time application like if you ever go to downtown and uh, work for a uh, financial company for 120,000 per year <laughs> then you will need to create threads in C sharp, C++, or Java. Process scheduling. That's another th uh, thing about processes. What do we have so far? Every process has a state and they're managed by the operating system. Every process has to have a PCB and they're all in uh, all that kind of, all information related to one specific process is held on the memory right we all we know those stuff about process now it is the scheduling okay how to manage them we know how to create them we know what's inside as a context and now how can we manage those stuff there's something called process scheduler or scheduler <laughs> it's more American scheduler I guess what is it Okay, I have a bunch of processes in hand, all right? It's in the queue, um, it, on the memory. I didn't know which one goes first. How do I do that? How do I uh, select which one uh, should be the first, which one should be the second, or the third? The, it's, a, it's a job for process uh, scheduler, uh, which is an algorithm, which is an application built in, in the operating system. Okay, the operating system does the process scheduling. Not you, not the developer or anybody else, but the operating system. 
for why do we need to do that here you know we just said the CPU handles bit uh, switches between uh, two or more different jobs right to uh, not to wait and uh, not to waste time we do that but how is it uh, is it this is what it is but how it's done is here uh, done by the process scheduling so we have a job queue we can put processes in a queue by the way now you should remember your uh, queue data structure from data structure class 260 and there's also another type of type of queue ready queue all processes residing in the main memory ready to go and waiting to execute every <coughs> they will be in the ready queue and all the processes you need to run they will be dumped into the job queue and the device queues if you had to touch any IO as a process if you need to get some data from some IO devices by the way network card is also an IO device uh, don't only think that your USB things are uh, you know devices input output devices the keyboard is input output uh, device the webcam is also an input output device these are all attached to the IO ports on the motherboard are IO devices including the network card so if you're trying to log into your NYIT uh, student portal you are actually using your network card so that process has to wait for the network card by the uh, in the meantime a network card takes the digital data it converts it into electrical signal it releases on the net right or on the local area network and then waits for an answer so it takes time right so you need to wait for that that is why you have a queue if you have to wait for anything, you have to go in, you know, uh, in a line, which is called Q in the computer science. All right, this <coughs> that looks weird. Process representation in Linux. All right, we have in the, in this textbook, they're always talking about Linux and Windows. They don't really talk about Macintosh operating systems or anything else uh, much more, you know. Not really, but uh, also uh, all the, almost all the applications are in C. All right, here they represent a Linux uh, process representation. Here we have the struct in Linux. Everything is written in C, right? And everything is a file. So for the process information, everything is written uh, in the uh, data structure called struct okay and this is different than the struct uh, stack we know it's not a stack it is struct it's some sort of object you can think of here what happens with the overall system system okay you have a queue for the processes ready to run a queue for the tape unit, a queue for the tape unit, the second one, another queue for a disk unit, another one for the terminal, etc., etc. That means you're going to have an input output queue for every device. Okay, some device, uh, devices will be used by some processes, but some of them are not used for, uh, by anyone. For example, these tape units here, unit zero and unit one, they're not used for by any processes. Okay, which ones are used? The ready queue is the uh, vital. You know, you you have to have it. But uh, disk, for example, is used by process Z, uh, three, process fourteen, and six. What are those PCB stuff? Roll back five minutes and try to remember PCB. What is a PCB tree, for example? Process control block tree, process con uh, process control block fourteen, etc. That means they are actually organizing processes, right? When we say process, 
in the memory we see the process control block itself all right you have to manage those juggle with between them for example <coughs> by the way every queue here is a linked list do you understand a linked list you know it's right you know what it is so that linked list will have a header head and tail that means is a data structure named Q and the formal implementation is linked list not an array so uh, we had to link the head to the first process control block in the in the queue that means when we're uh, processing this list first one PCB 7 has to go all right and the second one PCB2 has to go because in the queue the linked list order tells me so for the disk unit obviously PCB3 process 3 14 and 6 is trying to read or write from to disk right but they have to wait because uh, process 3 is doing something on the disk while it's doing that process 14 has to fade um, has to wait and process 6 also has to wait they had to wait uh, the previous one to complete the job first etc all right so by looking at this diagram can you tell me which process will be run next on the CPU options you have PCB 7, 2, 3, 14, 6, and 5. Which one is the next process needs to be run in this diagram? Okay, I have PCB 65 running already, and eventually it will end, right? And we will terminate that. Who is next? By looking at this diagram, you should be able to tell me which process is the next one. Okay, that's an answer. Who else? Why not three? Three is the first. Three is uh, directly connected to the head on disk unit zero two. Why we're not running three? But seven. The answer is seven, yes. But why? What queue? Which queue? Okay, what's the difference between the uh, between the ready queue and the device queues listed down here? Okay, how many states we uh, possibly we can have for a process? We can have a new, ready, waiting, terminating. So these uh, any process is ready to run will be in the ready queue. That means we will run whatever is next in the queue here in the ready queue. <coughs> But sometimes we put them into the device queues because they have to do some I.O. stuff, right? They have to read or write things. But they are not ready. They are in the I.O. queue and they are not ready. When they are done with the I.O. queue, the next queue they will be attached is the ready queue. But since they are not ready yet, it's not possible to run them before process 7 or process 2. Okay, in this diagram, the first 